have to kind of worry about it or couch it or give it a second thought or wonder how they're going to receive it or, or worry about what I'm going to get back from it or how, how they're going to think of me or what they're going to think about me. Those things I don't even worry about anymore in that sense. So in, when I'm in front of an audience, I have to assess, is this the gift I came to give that person? What are the highest words I could say here that could lift that person into a new understanding and a brand new experience of who they really are? That, by the way, is what I think we can all do for all of humanity. You know, someone once asked me, well, you know, if, if uh, our life is not about our individual dramas, mm -hmm. if we're not supposed to be getting caught up in all these day-to-day -day things, then what is our life about? I mean, what are, what are we to do? What is the invitation? What is the challenge placed before all of humanity? I think the challenge before all of humanity and the opportunity and the invitation is for us to step into each moment and ask ourselves, what is my gift here that I can give to this moment? I asked God, Robin, in, in the early part of my dialogue, why isn't my life working? I don't understand why my life isn't working. I mean, nothing was working at that time. And God said to me, Neil, it's really quite simple. You think your life has something to do with you. But I'm here to tell you that your life has nothing to do with you. Read that no thing at all. Well, I, I said, well, how can that be? God said, well, you see, Neil, you are perfect and whole and complete just the way you're sitting there. And you think you're not, and that is the fiction. But the truth is that you're whole and complete and perfect just the way you're sitting there. You don't have to fix anything, change anything, or do anything to be utterly perfect in my eyes. Now, God said to me, Neil, I've told you that. I've told everyone else that, too but I'm hoping that you will believe me so that you can spend the rest of your life reminding everyone else. Now here's what's interesting, Robin, about that. As I've made the decision that my life has nothing to do with me and everything to do with everyone else, with giving the gift of people back to themselves, my life mission, incidentally, is to give people back to themselves, thus to change their mind about God, about life, and about each other. As I have embarked on that mission to give people back to themselves, all the things I thought that I had to work for and struggle and strain for that I wanted in my own life, the love of others, a, a nice income, the things of life that make us all feel good, even good health, all those things have fallen down upon me without my even reaching for them because I've got that life isn't about me. And God says, oh, he gets that his life has nothing to do with him. Give him everything because <laughs> he's out there doing the work. Mm -hmm. So don't go around asking, what are we to eat? What are we to drink? Wherewithal will we clothe ourselves? Seek ye first what? The kingdom of heaven and all else will be added unto you. Thus it has been written and I think said very well by all the masters through all the ages, each in their own way, and said again on this day. So powerful so simple. It is simple. Life is extraordinarily simple. Amazingly simple. Mm. We're making things very complicated here. We don't have to. But because of moments like this, because of programs like yours, because of your willingness to spend this kind of time sharing this message with the thousands of people who watch it, we have an opportunity to seek a newer world, to make it even a better place. So the world is grateful for the likes of you. I'm sure. Mm. Speaking of messages, thank you for that. What would be a message that you would like to leave with our viewers? Of those to whom much is given, much is asked. Look then to see what in each moment of your day-to-day -day life you can gift to the world that the world might heal itself at last. And what about for you? Say five years from now, what would you like to be doing, achieving? What would you like to see? I know that's kind of like <laughs> a dirt question. No, I... Well, let's put it out there. I, I, I hope that... I've thought about it, actually. Mm. It's not a bad question at all. Any thinking person would have to ask themselves that kind of a question. Mm. Uh, what I hope in five years will have happened is that I will have changed the world's mind about God, changed the world's understanding of what life is really about, and changed the way people interact with each other on this planet. 
That's a huge agenda. I mean, it's almost grandiose. Mm -hmm. uh, but Einstein, I think, is the one who said, if it's not impossible, it's not worth even attempting. <laughs> OK. How often would you be getting a little frustrated sometimes with us as a, a, uh, a collective and individually and just not getting the message? Sometimes you must get a little frustrated. Uh, about, about every 20 minutes. Oh, good to hear that. <laughs> no, I, I'm really? serious. I'm, I, 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 I said before, I'm a very, yeah. very normal person. Yeah. I walk out into the street and I just look out my, you know, car windows I'm driving by and go, what are they, what are they thinking of? What, what are they doing? I see people walking down the street, you know, smoking. I saw them coming into the studio here, smoking, you know, and, and I thought, why? I wanted to go walk up to them. Don't do that. Don't do that. Why would you do that to this beautiful, beautiful body? But it's not my place, you see. But I mean, you ask how many, you know, or I see people arguing on the street. A couple of days ago, I was in Canada and I saw two people at a shopping center, you know, arguing with each other. I just wanted to walk up to each other and say, don't do that. Don't do that. Stop it. But you know, I, I've done those things myself. This is the pot calling the kettle black. Mm. How do I dare say to someone else, don't do that, when I did all of those things and more? Mm. So when I move to that place of recognizing my own faults and foibles, then I have great compassion on all of us. And then I turn to God. God, bring us a message and a messenger who can cause all of us to stop this, all these things that we do, and live life as it was truly meant to be lived. And if I can add a little bit to that message, I'm glad I came here to this planet in this way at this time. And I'm very grateful. And on that note, Neil, I'm so grateful you've come on and been on this show. It's almost like Conversations with God meets Conversation with Robin. And there's a story behind that name for the show, by the way. It was not my choice, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, not my conscious choice, anyway. Thank you so much for, for being and sharing your wonderful knowledge and wisdom. Well, you're very kind. Thank you for having me here. And uh, maybe we'll have you on the show another time. I would love to do that. Thank you. I'd love to have you. And thank you for being with us. And uh, I hope you got as much out of this as what I did. Take care. Go onto the website, conversationswithrobin.com, and you'll be able to find out times, guests, and stations. See you soon. Neil, thank you so much.